God is good. All, All the, the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. For such a time as this, for such a time as this, we've been summoned here by God. For such a time as this, we will. For such a time as this. Ooh, I'm driving my life this way, looking for a better way for me.
Boa. Letting you know, we meant to do that. <laughs> totally. Welcome to worship at Sharon Center United Methodist Church. We're here on uh, a Labor Day weekend. It's not quite Labor Day weekend as we as we uh, as we film, but I did not want to uh, call your attention to the fact that this is our uh, annual celebration of the harvest, and we typically have done. A blessing of the tractor service, uh, separate from our Sunday morning service today, um, this weekend, uh, we are going to be doing it as a part of the service. So I have dressed sort of like a farmer. Uh, this T-shirt, Gardener Sales and Service, comes from my hus my husband's late father's business, his the family business, a John Deere dealership. Um, and this also comes from uh, my father-in-law, this hat, um, because he was a decal dealer for a while. And I always imagine farmers with uh, a seed corn hat on, whether that they wear them or not, I don't know. Um, 
But I've been informed that this may be um, a not a very good cap to wear in this congregation where the Stutzmans have been a part of and supportive of and uh, undergirding the ministry here. So um, I will replace that decal, that uh, decal, whoops, with Stutzman, and I just blew away. Anyway, if you've got to look at it, please don't uh, sue me for uh, libel because I thought I did a pretty good job of copying the logo um, as it is. So anyway, we celebrate the harvest. We celebrate God's goodness to us. Um, something that I want to let you know about is that on the next three Sundays in September in the afternoon, we'll be having uh, a study uh, discussion group um, outside here uh, under one of these trees. Um, and uh, the title of it is Lessons from Creation. We're going to talk about lessons from biblical plants, lessons from um, biblical animals, and, and talk also about um, uh, Christian earth keeping or uh, keeping um, good stewardship of, of the earth. And uh, so, with that, I'd like to share uh, some, some things with the children. And you'll see on either side of, of the, the flowers here today that I have, again, John Deere tractors. Now, if you like a different color of tractor, that's fine. Um, but I have these tractors here to remind us that farmers need tools or equipment to do their work. And one of the things they need um, is a tractor, or two or three or four, however many they have, um, to do uh, the work of planting and, and plowing and spraying and harvesting. Um, and as Christians, we need tools or equipment too. And I thought of two that, that, that are very helpful to us. One is the Bible. This is a tool we need, or a piece of equipment we need. Um, we need to learn the stories of the Bible. We need to learn lessons from the Bible on uh, how to live our Christian life and what God is like. And then another tool for our Christian life is prayer. Prayer is important. Prayer helps us to be in touch with God. Uh, it helps God to form us. Uh, kind of like modeling some clay or some Play-Doh uh, helps us. The more we pray, the more God can influence us and make us more like Christ. And so, farmers need tractors. Christians need, among many other things, the Bible and prayer. Speaking of the Bible, I want to read from Psalm 126. Uh, the, in my Bible, it has the heading, A Harvest of Joy. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negeb. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. <laughs>
us be in prayer. Blessed are you ever creating God. In your image our lives are made. In your glory we offer all the work of our hearts and hands and minds. Blessed are you, O God, now and forever. Blessed are you whose work is repaid, for by your work and by the payment you receive, your lives and the lives of others around you and around the world are blessed. Blessed are those whose work is unpaid, who offer what you can to enrich the lives of others through time, talents, skill, strength, and love. Blessed are you who seek work but have not found it, or whose work now is not yet what it may be, yet still you seek that your gifts may be shared more fully. Yours is the glory in their labors. Yours be the glory in our lives. Blessed also are those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray that they might know your patience, O God, your courage and hope in you. Give wisdom to our leaders and to all your people as we work to make a healthy, just, and peaceful world. Endow those who follow Christ with the gifts and tools to fulfill their calling. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us give thanks for what God has given us as we uh, share the blessings with one another um, and dedicate them to God. Let us collect our morning offering and dedicate our gifts. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us, for these financial offerings, for the gifts of our lives. We ask your blessing. May these gifts make a difference in the lives of those in our congregation and around the world. Amen. Our scripture reading, another scripture reading today, is from Ephesians chapter 4. It's in the section that is uh, talking about the unity of the body. And of special interest to me today is that of being called to do God's work. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There was one body and one Spirit, 
just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. It seems like just a few weeks ago that I was marveling at uh, seeing the spring flowers pushing up through the soil and seeing that tiny hint of green as the corn and oats came up. It seems like just a few days ago that I was noticing the maturity of the flowers and vegetable plants in my yard. And wasn't it just yesterday that I noticed the corn begin to tassel? Yet as my green beans and broccoli stop producing and my flowers start to fade and dry and get very straggly, I feel like I need to get ready to move on and to think of how I will do things differently or the same next year in my planting and growing. I'm getting ready to pull up the spent vegetables and am not as concerned that my potted plants get enough water. I'm beginning to move on to another season, although it often takes a lot of mental and spiritual energy for me to do that, especially when we come up to fall and winter. But with the coming of fall, we prepare for harvest. It's not been a perfect summer for me, perhaps in some ways more stressful than ones in the recent past. I have shed some tears of frustration and anger and loss, and perhaps you have too. During this growing season, our state and country have experienced turmoil. We have all been forced to live with varying degrees of uncertainty. Just like when we planted those seeds in the spring. When we plant, we do not know what the results will be, but we plant the seeds anyway, with hope. I have observed and been told um, throughout my life that farming is a difficult occupation. It's hard on the body, hard on the emotions. I once was told it was the most dangerous of all occupations. There are many risks, disappointments in farming. This year's drought and derecho have not helped matters. And other weather extremes, which are getting worse, it causes turmoil within us and um, gives us concern for our mental health. And, and I hope that you will not feel that you are a weak person if you try to find some healing because, in fact, it takes a strong person to ask for help. But this farming thing is ingrained in some of you. And there is satisfaction in, harmon in farming and in being a part of the land and, and the community that has nurtured you and continues to nurture you. In the psalm that I read today, it, it is a reflection of the Israelites returning to their land after um, having much hardship and being away from their place and having um, Jerusalem or Zion experience destruction. During that time, the people shed many tears, 
metaphorically and probably literally. But those tears turned into joy. I have always loved the imagery of this psalm, Psalm 126, because of verses like verse 2. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. And verse 5, may those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. It causes me to visualize tears of pain soaking into the ground and from them sprouting up bright, cheerful flowers, or more appropriately for around Sharon Center, corn, beans, oats, or hay. It is like God turning our frustration into laughter. It makes me think of the frustration of farmers or of anyone um, who has turned what they've invested into abundance or it has been turned into abundance for them. The prayer of renewal, Psalm 126, is appropriately used at harvest time. Praying at any time reminds us of the joy of restoration God has brought us in the past and will in the future. It helps us to look forward to joy. Being a farmer is integral to one's identity. The old saying goes, you can take the boy off the farm, but you can't take the farm out of the boy. People who identify with the land and, and then are away from it for a while immediately feel at home when they come back. It is a calling for many. Ephesians chapter 4 begins by asking us to lead a life worthy of our calling, our calling in Jesus Christ. We may be feel called to be a farmer or an accountant or a teacher, even a pastor, yet that is not the most important calling. The most important is to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. We can be a disciple as we work in our occupation, in the midst of our work. Labor Day, which is coming up, highlights the importance of work and good work ethic and equitable working conditions. For those who are followers of Christ, it highlights the importance of fulfilling the calling we have received from God and to do it with the marks of the Christian lifestyle of humility, gentleness, patience, and love. If for some reason you can no longer be a farmer or accountant or teacher or whatever your career is, you still are somebody. You still are a child of God and disciple of Christ. Your identity that goes with your occupation can change, but your identity as a Christian does not. We can live with uncertainty because we know that we can rely on God to carry us through. No matter if we lose or gain, we can be confident in our faith. Just as the people of Israel returning from exile to their land were able to laugh again, we who have felt as if we don't recognize the world or the country or our church or even our personal lives anymore, are still able to laugh and to be led to a place of joy. Zion, Jerusalem, the center of Jew Jewish faith, would never be exactly the same as before, as it was destroyed. But it was restored, and the people's faith restored. Our country, our church, 
our personal and family lives will never be the same after disease, destruction, or other kinds of loss, but they can be restored. We can rebuild with the maturity gained from our experience and based on our calling in Christ. I find beauty and meaning in the verse to live a life worthy of your calling. And at times I have felt that I have not done what is required to be worthy of the calling of pastor or mother or daughter, let alone the calling to be a faithful disciple. When I feel that I've left God down, I feel the guiltiest. By the grace and mercy of God, I am saved from this guilt. Every time God presents a new opportunity, when I seize the opportunity and plant the seeds, I end up with positive results. By trusting in God and following the ways of Jesus, my tears can become joy. Remembering what the countryside was like in the spring and what it has become as we come closer to fall and harvest again makes me marvel. I am also impressed by the ways in which the Holy Spirit has produced fruit in individuals and in this congregation. May we feel free to celebrate God's abundance and to bless those who have done and will be doing the harvesting. Afterwards, we can say, as in, in Psalm 126.3, the Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. To share in uh, what we will be doing in person on Sunday morning, I'd like to offer the blessings for uh, the tractors, and we can think about a tractor in the parking lot or in the field, or one of these tractors um, can remind us of that. And then we also will pray for the community and bless the community. Bless this tractor, O oh God, and those that work in, on, and around it, that they may be blessed in abundance by your creation and be blessed in safety and peace. And bless this community, that those who toil in the field, that those who toil outside of the field, and all that are impacted by the field, that the harvest season may be plentiful, safe, life-giving, and point to your glory. Let us pray. O oh God, grant us patience and persistence and common sense during the season of harvest and time of urgency. We give you thanks that there is such a time and opportunity to feed and nurture your creation. Teach all of us to care for one another. Look out for one another and hold one, one another up as you do for us. We thank you for the life and labor of these caregivers of the earth and laborers worth their hire. And we humbly ask you that you keep them alert and safe, as well as those who engage them. Let us never forget you are the living God, the Lord of today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Amen. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall
shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilly breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. benediction today I want to share again some words from Ephesians 4 I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness with patience bearing with one another and love making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace May you know the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit be with you, and may you know joy and abundance all of your days. Amen.